Okay, now we can hear you. Oh, you couldn't hear me? The whole time? <laughs> the mic got turned off again, yeah. Uh-oh, okay. Well, hey, everybody, it's Angela. <laughs> Going to be painting Christmas mug and cookies today. And, uh, yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. It's okay. Um, we're going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. This is a canvas board from Frederick's Mixed Media Board. I haven't done anything to it except for just to transfer on the design. And I've edited my design last minute here. So if you were expecting the other uh, image, we're not doing that one. We're doing this one. Um, and I've kind of taken like three different images and mushed them together and then flipped it and done a bunch of stuff to it just to get it kind of the composition the way I wanted it. So I'm going to be doing more of that this year and just kind of trying to take um, some of these images that I'm found and make them more um, my own, kind of move things around and do that. So uh, don't be surprised if you see me doing that again in future. But it's kind of helpful, I think, to see how to do that, you know. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it's kind of hard to find just the exact right image that you want to use every time. So I like this one. I do too. I like it. It just feels a little bit more warm and Christmassy to mm. me. I like the colors. Um, all right. So I'll be using a variety of brushes. I've got a couple blenders here that'll help with the blending, obviously. Um, I've got a Willows or a Deerfoot stippler for, um, the background here. And then I'm also going to probably be using a, um, one of these little foam pouncers to do some of the bokeh effect that's got those little lights and things in the background. Go ahead and put up the reference photo there so they can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then I've got a couple of filberts and a flat. These are all Princeton brushes. The red handles are their Velvet Touchline and the green handles are their Summit series, um, 6100 Summit series. So, all right. And then the blue are, some, are their um, Select. I'll mention the brushes more as I use them, but um, you're pretty much going to want an angle brush, some sort of a filbert for the background, and then a round for some of your details. Those will be the three for sure, and then some sort of a round to do our little blending in the background. So, um, <clears throat> go over colors. I had a fairly limited palette today. I just decided to kind of mix a few colors. Uh, there's kind of a limited palette on this image too. So you've got kind of green, turquoise, and red. Those are our main colors, which I absolutely love that color combination for Christmas. So um, it's kind of a really fresh, modern color palette. Um, so I think it'll be a fun one. Burnt Umber, uh, Yellow Oxide, Cadmium Yellow Medium. Uh, this one's Thalo, Green Yellow Shade, Cobalt Teal, L Ultramarine Blue, uh, Quinacrido Magenta, Cadmium Red Medium, uh, Unbleached Titanium, Titanium White, and a little bit of Zinc White just for our highlights and things. It's a transparent white. Um, and then this one is some Gloss Glazing Liquid. I'm going to do one more spray of my paints before I start. And we're just going to jump on in there. So I decided to flip my mug. If you look at the reference photo, that candy cane is pointing out that way. And the green from here is pointing this way. This green tree is pointing in. But then that candy cane was pointing out. And so it kind of just took your eye like this and off the canvas. So by pointing it back this way, it kind of is going to draw it back around. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of green in our um, background here in this direction to kind of stop that green from pushing you out that way and it'll kind of circle back around here does that make sense so and then we're going to use the turquoise from here in the background too a little bit so it'll all kind of go together as we get going here as long as my eyes don't get dizzy going around all the greens i'll be okay <laughs> i think you'll be all right, all right good. <laughs> i'm going to start with the eight bright and the bright is different from the flat brush. The flat brush would be a little bit longer, bright, so a little bit shorter, a little bit easier to control. And I'm going to use lots of white. And we're just going to paint it in our background. I've got a lot of our, we're actually kind of backlit here in our photograph. Um, a lot of white back in here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just start with the white and fill in around my mug. And then we'll add some colors to it as we get going here but this back corner is pretty much just plain old white but having a little bit of white here will kind of help I'm going to add a little bit of the glazing liquid to it too and that'll give it a little bit extra drying time so that we can blend into it this gloss glazing liquid that I use from golden has some extender in it all right so that's good I'm going to use a little bit of my cobalt turquoise and 
ultramarine blue and more of my white and I might add just the tiniest little bit of brown I don't want it doled out too much I just want it a little bit more grayed out gray out that blue just by adding a little bit of brown you could add black too if you wanted to okay very pretty so we're going to use that I'm just going to try to kind of mimic the really soft fuzzy look that we've got going on back here there's not a lot of color and I'm going to add a little bit of my ultramarine blue as well get a little bit of this other blue and we'll have both blues kind of going on back here a little bit of turquoise a little bit of ultramarine blue and we're going to be using the ultramarine blue and burnt umber mixture for our grays and a lot of the shadows in the in and around our cookies and things so we'll be using it in more than one place so welcome everybody i started to say that and then we we were not our mic wasn't on so welcome and hi and i even checked it and it was working and so That's i don't weird. know what i clicked or did but it's fine it, yeah. it happens it's Oh well. The joys of live streaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I was just telling Mark ahead of, you know, before the show, it was like, I really, I get more nervous when I have this kind of a painting where I've changed a lot of things because taking images and pushing, you know, like photoshopping things and mashing things up, you know, it, you can tend to have like your light source coming from this on this object that you've thrown in here and then your light source coming from here on another object and it can kind of like not match up very, very well sometimes. So there's a lot to, you have to kind of look out for and make sure that you're, you know, making sense of your image. But I think it'll be all right. <laughs> but it always makes me a little bit nervous when I'm doing this kind of, and no pressure, just doing it live, okay. you know. For the first time yeah. in front of an audience, you know. You got this. We we we, uh, we just joke that it's just us anyway, so it doesn't really... Fortunately, we don't have like 400 eyes of, you know, no. people in the studio with us. <laughs> that would be <laughs> much more difficult. <laughs> I can pretend it's just Mark and I. <laughs> because it is. It is. It is just Mark and I. I mean, we could do... I've got a... I've mixed up the burnt umber and burnt at uh, yellow oxide. I'm sorry. I just realized it got started started here and didn't get too far. Okay, go. I have a, a cup of hot cocoa here with some marshmallow cream if you want to use right. that as a reference instead. Ooh, let me yeah, see it. I'm going to put it on camera. We make our own hot cocoa. See? It's a... I think that's better. Yeah. That is pretty cool. And Mark didn't buy that for himself either. He the boys <laughs> gave it to him. Another one I got says world's greatest dad. Or farter, one one or the other. Yeah, that was another <laughs> Father's Day gift for my <laughs> loving sons. Yeah. Right, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> and it was also like three sizes too small. So yes, it, so it was it yeah, it's beautiful. Very, very, very nice. And oh yes, I did wear it. <laughs> did you wear it out though that's what challenge accepted <laughs> okay can i use a little bit of this burnt umber and yellow oxide that i mixed up earlier and i used the same color I didn't clean out my brush so it had a little bit of the you know these blues tinting it and adding just a little hint of green to it that's what i was talking about you know adding a little bit of this green in this background so I'm just going to kind of wisp it in here so it's like maybe there's some greenery back here but we can't really tell what it is I don't want to I don't want it too obvious I just want kind of the hint of that green color back there we have a question for the canvas sure they would like to know is the mixed media canvas more of a smooth surface or more textured yes as much smoother um, and uh, it's more porous too it's got um, it's almost like the watercolor canvases. If you've ever used any of the Frederick's watercolor canvases, they have a lot of, um, a lot more, they're kind of more thirsty. This one, it reminds me a little bit. It's not as thirsty as these watercolor ones that I use sometimes. 
um, uh, but it's kind of similar, but not quite as bad. They it's uh, it accepts watercolor, acrylic, alcohol, ink, airbrush, and other aqueous aqueous based Ooh. media. So, <clears throat> all right, getting a little bit more of that blue. Just felt like there was like a lot of green down here, and not the right green. So it's kind of a pretty, not quite minty, but like a really pretty yellow-green that we're seeing in the cookies. We used to have this color scheme in our house a couple of years ago. We I had all the ornaments and everything, all turquoise and green, and then I got on a... I don't know why I do this. Every couple of years, I have to change everything out. I don't know if you guys are like that where I have perfectly good stuff, and then I'm, I'm just like, I'm, okay, I'm tired of this now. I'm going to have I, to change everything. Like that. And, yeah, so now we have silver and gold. Everything's very elegant looking. I think it was when we did the renovation of the house. It was like, our house is too fancy for the green. <laughs> so I think I like this color scheme better. The other one's a little bit boring. I may go back to this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now that we got Liam, our little grandbaby, we have an excuse to have a little bit more color in the house. <laughs> Doesn't have to be fancy. All right, so just adding these colors around here. I'm going to add a little bit more of this green down here. And this area down here is going to be, get a little bit more white right here. But this area down here is going to be darker because it's got it's in shadow. So I'm going to get that burnt umber and go fairly dark right up underneath my mug here. And between my cookie and my mug, cookie plate and my mug, I'm just going to kind of pull that down. And it's got a pretty hard shadow coming down from the mug here. My dog Fitz Pickle has started to bark at other dogs whenever he hears them. It's getting a really annoying. He's well, been doing it during my shows on he, thir Thursdays too. I left the door open because he likes to lay just halfway in, in and out of the door. Right. Because he doesn't want it closed and not be with us, but he doesn't want to not be with Spencer either. So he just kind of purposely right. lays there. Mm -hmm. But you lose that privilege when you bark. Yeah. Yep. Door got he's banned now. <laughs> he's banned. Okay, something like that. Get the white here and get try to get a little bit more of the blue and just kind of fill in the rest of this corner with that. Right. And you can see that, that I'm not really blending this. You can see the brush strokes and everything. It's I kind of like that more painterly look for something like this. So I'm not going to try to refine this much. I'm going to kind of leave it sort of not messy, just painterly is the word for it. Painterly background. And we may need to add a little bit more contrast back here. It is very light in our photo though, so, um, but I think it might need a little bit darker color, but we'll put a little bit of um, our dots with the yellow here in a minute, and that'll help um, some, I think, too. So I'm gonna get a little bit of this green and just bring it up here on this side. It's kind of like what we did over, over there, just a slight little indication I might get some white and just add some like little highlights through it see that's what I was talking about with the contrast just kind of helps kind of with the color story if you've got you don't have just like one plain color in here there we go it also kind of pushes the movement around and I think it's working. All right. Um, let's see. 
Let's go ahead and do our mug next. I'm gonna get a filbert. This is a four filbert. This might be too big, but we'll see. And I'm gonna spray my canvas and spray my background colors here so I can grab into them a little bit if I need to later. I'm gonna mix kind of 50-50 my red. That would give me a really beautiful bright red to use on my mug. Now the quinacridone magenta is a transparent color, so if I was to use it alone, um, well, one, it's it's very um, very pink, but also it would not cover very well. I'd probably have to do two or three coats of it to get it to cover. So adding that cadmium red also makes the color more opaque, and it makes the cadmium red a little bit brighter, too. Probably going to need to just not worry about my decorations and get the mug painted in here. It's going okay though. So how are you doing today, babe? Doing good. Glad mm -hmm. to be painting. It is. It's a good That's day a nice when I get day. to paint. <laughs> I have the best job. <laughs> I was just telling Mark, too, it's kind of came at a good place. I mean, I've been painting for about 30 years on my own, you know, as not really a hobby. I mean, I've been, you know, working at it and selling in galleries and to private collectors. I did a lot of mural work. We did wood crafting for a long time so I did like craft fairs for when my boys were little and stuff but I've never really had a set schedule you know with it I've always just kind of been able to sort of be a mom too and do my you know art thing when I had time and um, we were just talking about how it's nice to have this career now at the now that our kids are grown and out of the house or, or getting there. Because I wouldn't have been able to do this when they were younger. It would have been too much stress, too much. I wouldn't have been able to do all the parties and things with, do all the mom stuff and do this, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are moms that do it and kudos to you because I, mm -hmm. man, I it's don't. It's a lot of time. It's, it's. It's just mentally too, you know, it's it's hard being a mom. <laughs> it's mentally draining and this, you know, any kind of career is too, so kind of any anybody that can do both at the same time is pretty amazing. So we are very lucky that that I got to do the mom thing and paint in my spare time and then now I've got time to do it like this. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush and I've got a lot of little tight spaces here I'm having to get into. And uh, So shout out to the working moms. <laughs> Especially the single moms. I've got Amen. some friends that are single moms and man. That is not an easy job, especially now with COVID and everything. I'm just like, I don't even know how they did it last year, you know, <laughs> the work and on lockdown. I don't know. I don't know. I actually had a conversation on the phone with, I can't remember who it was I was talking to. It was some, oh, I don't know. It wasn't a credit card. It was something like that, though. It was some sort of a service, you know, person, personnel. And you could tell she was at her home <laughs> working, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and we were on hold waiting for something. And I was like, "Man, you know, it sounds like you got a house full or something." She's like, "Oh man," <laughs> she, <laughs> like, "Yes, these kids are driving me crazy." <laughs> it's like, "Oh, I can believe it." <laughs> you could hear him screaming in the background. And she's trying to be all professional. <laughs> it's like, bless your heart. 
Oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> I'm sure she didn't think it was hilarious, but I th- <laughs> I, wonder, I admired I wonder, it. <laughs> I wonder if her tone of voice changed after she hung up with us when she was talking to her kids. <laughs> I think she was just as polite and courteous. To her kids? When, yeah, yeah of course. She got off the phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how we are, right? That's how I would have been, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've just been like, <laughs> children. Oh, you little angels. <laughs> really wish she wouldn't be so loud when I was on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Hope Nathan's not watching. <laughs> you can tell on us. <laughs> Yeah, so anyhow, all that to say, I very, feel very blessed to be able to do this. And and then my kids are grown up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You did a good job. We babe. did that. Been there, done that. We got the t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Mark especially. Three sizes Three too sizes small. Three sizes too small. Yep. <clears throat> <laughs> and now we get to be the ones to spoil them and be grandba- grandparents, which is the best. Shout out to our mod, Jane. She just had a her first, I think her first grandbaby, mm-hmm. granddaughter. granddaughter yeah. I'm super jealous. <laughs> Told my boys I want a grand granddaughter next. Well, not that I don't love my grandson and my boys. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't have known how to be a mom to girls. They're a lot more drama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one, so I can say that. <laughs> you speak from personal experience. I know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you, you're you not allowed to say that, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> I can think it. <laughs> God knew what he was doing when he gave me boys. <laughs> He's ditto for me. But yes. now that I get to spoil one, I can just like, you know, do the grand granddaughter thing and have the best of both worlds oh, and send geez, her yeah. home when, you know. The drama starts. What? So, oh, geez, yeah, I'm just imagining the uh, <laughs> the spoilage. The the bank account mm. problems. <laughs> <laughs> Clothing. So I guess we won't be retiring anytime they soon. Have, they have such cute things for little girls. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. This is just taking a while, so we might as well talk about mm-hmm. stuff. I know. Don't leave me comments about us talking. I know. Hey, somebody would like you to discuss when you are dabbing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. A color. So, discuss when I'm dabbing a color. It says, please discuss when you use dabbing a color. When I use dabbing a color. Mm-hmm. Um, not really sure. Um, well, even if I'm dabbing it, usually I'm smushing it around afterwards. But I'm dabbing it um, here to get the paintwork down into the canvas texture. Um, sometimes just, you know, putting it on smoothly, you might get some broken edges or, you know, may not fill in there. Um, you can do a couple of different things. You can dab it, push it down, you know, into the, um, into the gaps a little bit. Cause just kind of pulling it won't won't do that it won't it'll kind of skim across the surface it won't actually get down into the little crevices and this one this canvas doesn't have a ton of texture but on a you know on another canvas that you'd see it a lot more so you can dab it if you've got thicker paint or you can um you can add a little bit of water to your paint which which of course you risk um neutralizing or or thinning out the color by doing that so you may end up having to do two coats if you thin it out too much but thinning out the paint will also help it kind of get down into the work it down into the cracks and things but um a lot of times when you see me dabbing i'm just trying to kind of get that paint press that paint down into the canvas in places but i'm also i'm always um making sure that i'm cleaning up my brush strokes too so that I'm not leaving thick dabs of paint I'm not leaving big you know I don't paint real uh, I paint flat I don't paint real chunky you know um or textured you know so when I put my paint down I'll go back through and smooth out any edges 
And that that actually will make your paintings look a little bit more professional if you'll start doing that. Because um, that smoother texture can then be put in certain places where you want it. You know, if you've got texture in the middle of your mug here in a place that's kind of not really um, part of your color story or, or not part of the color scheme, you know, um, or, or not color, but um, composition, I guess. Fitz is crying out there. He wants in. Um, it can distract from the look of the piece and make it look a little bit less professional if you've got a bunch of weird lines going in different directions, you know, like weird texture things, unless you've done it on purpose. I mean, there's some artists that, that work with texture and that's kind of their signature style. And I do like that type of painting. But when I'm doing mine, when I'm trying to make it a little bit more realistic looking, a lot of times when you're layering, you need it smooth. So you can kind of see there that, see that ridge in the paint that just happened when I put that paint down. So I'm going to go back over that and smooth that out. So I have a nice smooth, so that whole, um, that whole um, line, I don't have a weird line in the middle of it. Cause when I go back over that, if that dried, it would dry in that, in that line, the acrylic paints dry kind of hard and it would stay there. That line would stay there. And then um, it wouldn't be in a place where I'd want it, you know. Okay, there we go. Hope that made sense. I don't know if that's what she was talking about, but maybe hopefully that we'll see. answered part of what she meant. If not, we'll just cut all that out. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. All right, so we got our red mug. We don't have any of our highlights or shadows or anything in there yet, but... We got it started at least. I'm gonna get. So he he wasn't wanting to come in. He's asleep at by the door and he was dreaming. Oh, that's funny. Oh, he's having puppy dreams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm getting some of my background color. I'm gonna add it up here. Just kind of disappear that edge out a little bit up there. I went a little bit high on that when I was putting it in, but. Okay, we'll see. So do you dab before you dab? No. Okay. <laughs> it's a totally different thing. Okay, well, I was just asking for myself. Because <laughs> you could probably get paint in your hair if you do that. Ah, uh, true. I'm using kind of an off-white hair, and I'm going to use that for my... I don't really know if this is the edge of the mug or the... I think this is part of the previous photo. It was some whipped cream that went all the way to the edge. So there's some whipped cream in here. You could maybe... I don't know. You could do whatever you wanted with this. It doesn't have to be... Like Mark said, and I do have other, um, I have other videos. I have videos that show coffee and I think maybe tea and I'm not sure if I've done tea actually. I've done a teacup, but I don't think it's showed inside, but I know I've got several different coffee ones mm -hmm. where you could do that if you wanted to. It's up to you. All right. And then these marshmallows. Which is one of Mark's favorite things. Mm -hmm. I'm not as big of a fan. I like them, but I don't love them like Mark does. I like them. I like marshmallow cream, too. You even put marshmallow on your, like, sundaes and stuff with ice cream and things, mm -hmm. which I don't like that much. And fluff and nutters. Mm-hmm. Now I've made homemade marshmallows. He has made them. They were they were pretty good. The first time I made them, they were great. And mm -hmm. then the next time I made them, like, well, you know, it's if you whip them, you, you know, whipping them longer, they're just going to be even better. <laughs> no, no, don't. You, you got to learn, follow the recipe. Follow the recipe. You whip them longer, they turn into rubber, <laughs> which you can then use to like 
you know, use on the bottom of your doors, <laughs> door stops, things, you know, anything you want cushioning. <laughs> you definitely don't want to eat them. Well, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> they don't melt. <laughs> I forgot about that. They've become some impenetrable <laughs> substance that they use on the outside of spaceships. Oh, that's funny. I yeah. forgot about that. <laughs> that was a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. probably three or four years ago. All right, so adding this um, unbleached titanium with a little bit of burned umber and a tiny bit of yellow oxide. I didn't really like the yellow hue, so I went back to the more, more like burnt umber. I added a little bit of blue, too, to kind of make it a gray. And we're going to use that as our kind of shadow color here on our marshmallows. This sounds like a weird color, but it's actually kind of this gray-brown. It's in there. And let's, I'm going to add a little bit of red to it as well. There's just like a slight tint of red in some of these areas here. And actually, on my, since I flipped this, I probably need to make the, the shadow into some different places. So I'm going to kind of put a little shadow along the bottom of the mug here. Because since our light is behind it in the photo graph of these marshmallows was in front so this is what I was talking about like when you change things up you kind of have to be aware of where your light source is coming from we can have multiple light sources it doesn't have to all be just from the back but I do like the kind of more reddish tone and in fact I'm, I think I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow cadmium yellow to my red create a prettier kind of more peachy get some of that magenta some of the cadmium yellow I need to get these sprayed because they're already starting to get kind of dry there we go and maybe a little bit more pink magenta there we go kind of like a salmon coral color, a little bit more yellow, there we go, let me use a little bit of this instead of just the brown because I feel like this is kind of a prettier, prettier shadow color. These are kind of a peppermint, I think, um, marshmallow with the little flakes of red in them. I'm thinking it's probably peppermint. And with the peppermint uh, candy cane kind of fit. So next week's a big week. Yeah, next week we're having a big sale. If you're wanting to get one of our paintings, we do these big sales twice a year, or at least this is our first year to do this. So I say I like twice a year, but <laughs> <laughs> this is new. <laughs> new this year, but I think we're going to continue to do it this way. Twice a year we do a big sale, once in the spring for Mother's Day and then another one in... The, at Christmas time so we're doing it before Christmas so that I can get everything boxed up and because I'm taking two weeks off at Christmas so I'm not going to be shipping things so 
The sale ends December 1st, and I'll have everything in the mail by the first week in December, and hopefully to you by Christmas. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, we're, we're selling a lot of last, like for the spring one, we didn't have a lot of our holiday stuff in that sale. We had mostly like, spring related items paintings and this time we're having more fall and winter paintings included as well so if you like those like some of the ones that we've been doing this fall and last those a lot of those are going to be included and we just sent out kind of a preview um, in my newsletter this is definitely better than that gray this is this really pretty pink is, is doing it but, um, but yeah, we're going to be having a big sale starting on November, or it's actually going to be Tuesday, I think, right? The 16th. Is that Tuesday? Sure. I'm going to get white here. Today's the 13th, so yes, Tuesday the 16th. So the sale starts Tuesday the 16th, so I'm going to run till December 1st. And it's 20% or no, 15% off of all my normal prices. And then the this is on my Etsy sale, by the way, on my Etsy channel. If you go there right now, there's nothing for sale. It's all going to go at, on the 16th. So everything will be visible then. But um, if you join my newsletter, we'll send out the notification the day before on Monday we'll send out and I'll show the pictures of all the ones that are going to be for sale too so in case you're interested so getting a little bit more yellow tone here and just adding that like a light yellow here and there but yeah it should be fun I'm looking forward to it it's going to be super busy Thanksgiving for me <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to have a house full of people here so I'm not going to have them in the mail Thanksgiving week, even if you buy it right away, it's kind of probably not going to get in the mail until. Well, the, yeah, we'll, we're going to make an effort. We're, uh, yeah, we've, we've moved furniture. Yes, we've got a room dedicated to it, so I'm going to try to. But I don't have all my paintings varnished, so I'm going to have to varnish them as I sell them. That's kind of the going to slow me down. So because I need a couple days to let the varnish uh, dry. You don't need to sleep. It's it's overrated. <laughs> All right, so there's our little marshmallows. Really fun. We'll add our little sprinkles to them here in a minute, but then that'll work. And how much time do we have? Okay, where well, I need to speed this we up. We got all the time. Hey, uh, is there a specific time on the 16th that goes live? I think or? it's. I think it's. I'm not sure. Actually, I don't know. So that'll be in the newsletter because I'm. I've got to look it up. It didn't. It gave me the option to add a date, but not a time. I want to say it might be midnight. I'd really prefer it to be noon, but I think it might be midnight on Tuesday, which midnight would be somebody's kind of difficult time. for central time. Yeah. Um, might be difficult for some people. <laughs> so you going to have to stay up. All right. Adding burnt umber, a little bit of burnt uh, ultramarine blue. Which just makes a black. Burnt umber, ultramarine blue makes a really nice black, gray, dark, dark color. And adding that to my magenta makes a really good shadow for my mug here. So I need a nice dark color there. I'm kind of off camera a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go a little bit dark down here. And then tomorrow is our bonus video, right? Yes, for our five dollar members mm, five dollar on patrons. Patreon. Mm -hmm. That's just a video that we do. That's kind of just outside of the YouTube norm. Those are more detailed and take a little bit longer to. 
finish, so do that for our pay patrons. But we've got over 500 videos here on YouTube, so it's not like we don't have <laughs> something for you to do here. Something for you to do here. You know, <laughs> this is just for those who want a little extra and some. It's a really fun, fun group of people, and and I have a whole set of patrons who at the ten five. Um, okay, so that's a five dollar level. I also have a bunch of patrons at the ten dollar level, and they have their own Facebook group and weekly um, videos with me. So that's even more fun. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all on patreoncom slash Art if you want to get information about it and join us for those. Pretty fun. All right, so added the reds, my base red here with a little bit of the unbleached titanium. I use a little bit of the white, I think. I don't love that color. I'm still trying to kind of. I think I want a little bit more of a this color here. So I think I'm going to use that instead. A kind of warmer orangey red. I'll use that as my highlight color in here. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so just a few little highlights kind of in the middle here. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And then I'm going to use kind of the deeper reds to give a second coat. Just the two reds together here. That original color that we did on the mug, but by giving it a second coat, it'll make it darker, richer color. And just kind of going over the edges here and here and there. So you added that dark around the sides and the bottom, though, that'll make it look more rounded. And right here where the handle attaches, it's really important to have like a little dark area right there too. And I'm going to put a little bit of a dark area right up underneath here too. It's water, my paint's getting thick. Okay, again, remember to smooth out any rough spots. Looks good. I'm gonna let that dry and we'll put in some brighter highlights here and there as well. But there's not a ton of, of highlights on the mug since the it's backlit, so that's why you're not seeing a ton there. Let's go ahead and work on our candy cane. I'm gonna get my green, add some white to it, a little bit of yellow to make it a little bit more of a yellow green. You could mix this green with phthalo blue if you don't have phthalo green, or you could use phthalo turquoise and mix some yellow into it. And it'll, any of those greens would work here. So, and I'm having to, since I've got my outlines kind of showing, I'm having to kind of go over those outlines just a little bit. So, if you're transferring on your design with transfer paper like I did, what you can do is make sure when you do your transfer that you go just inside your drawing so that um, your items don't get bigger. Because if you draw your transfer straight on the line, and then when you paint over it and you want to cover that line, then your line's going to make the whole thing a little bit wider. So just kind of keep that in mind. Coming right down to my... I I just like this. And I also took the candy cane and moved it up a little bit away from the mug. It was right down touching the mug. And I wanted it a little bit farther spaced out, just a little bit more give a little bit more room and also made room for our marshmallows to go in there so let's 
just uh, you don't have to go with what you're seeing. You can always kind of make adjustments if you want to. You just kind of have to follow kind of basic rules of physics and, <laughs> and light. <laughs> you can take time even after, you know, as long as I've been doing it, I still have to stop and think sometimes, okay, which way is the light coming from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's my shadow going to be? In the darker green there. Adding it. And I'm just kind of following that direction of the stripe. So I've got these like little bits of darker green. Mainly kind of wearing where the edges are. Okay. Looks good. And now for our white is not white. It's kind of a what color is that? <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of a white, but not quite. It's not quite that pink of our of our marshmallows. Let's add a little bit of yellow oxide to our white and see if that does it. It's probably close to our unbleached titanium color, honestly. But we'll see. It's not dark enough. Let's go ahead and grab some of that unbleached titanium. Here, let's use a little bit of that gray that we were using before. So what we need to do is make this color darker than our background. Our background is this light white color. And if we make this the same color, you know, this, this white of our candy cane, the same value, I should say not color, but value, because it's not the same color, obviously, but because the, and when I say value, I just mean the darkness of it, light, lightness, darkness of it is too similar to that background it's going to disappear that candy cane and you're not going to see the white bits it's not going to have any good, good contrast against that background so i'm going to get a little bit of this dark here right here where the candy cane goes down into the mug it's dark right there i'm going to go ahead and darken up the front of that marshmallow too Let's go ahead and get some of this dark for right in here too. All of this area right here is probably gonna be nice and dark where the marshmallows go down in. It's not dark in my photograph just because of the way the, again, this is not the photo that was taken with this mug. So the light source is in a different place, but knowing what I know about the way light works, this is going to be a little bit dark right here because our light's behind it. So this whole section here is going to be a little bit darker than what we have it. Okay. My photo, okay, my screen has a little dot on it. <laughs> like, no idea who would be splattering paint in my studio on my s screen. So weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get some white here. I keep finding these hairs everywhere. <laughs> I swear. So this is pure white here. I'm going to use it along the rim of my mug here, right up against that red. And I can tell that that color back there is not dark enough because I can't see what I just did. So that means I need to darken up this area right here, back here. Just like the candy cane. Kind of, well, 
I mean, I guess I could have melted marshmallow fluff in there. I feel like I want to kind of br bridge that gap. I don't want, I don't like that line there. So I'm kind of going to bring that marshmallow down into that area of the mug a little bit more. Because I think the edge of the mug is right in here, so get that pinkish color from the marshmallows. We'll just bring it right up. Yeah, I think that looks better. A little bit of that darker. We'll add some highlights on this, but I think this will be a little bit better. Dumber. Okay. Okay, I'm about to see how much uh, hate mail we're gonna get. What? I said I'm about to see how much hate mail we're gonna get. Why? Well, we're gonna be putting up our Christmas tree today. Yes. Why would we get hate mail for that? Oh, there's people who have very strong opinions of when a Christmas tree should go up. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. They're all wrong, <laughs> but that's okay. Well, I kind of do feel like Thanksgiving kind of gets eclipsed by Christmas in our house because I don't, I kind of hate that I'm going to be putting away my pumpkins there, before Thanksgiving, but. There is no evidence that there was not a Christmas tree at the first Thanksgiving. <laughs> they might have thought like we did that you might as well start early. That is correct. <laughs> if I, I have too much, it takes me too long to decorate for Christmas is what the problem is. So if I don't do it before Thanksgiving, it doesn't get done until like two weeks into December. And then by then, it, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Using some more of this. I'm just using the same colors that I used before here just to kind of adjust these tones here. A little bit more highlights. Just some of these, bringing that down there. And I'm going to use the really dark burnt umber right in here. See, it's these little, little, really dark areas that will really make the contrast sing. So you have little bits of really dark here and there, then it'll. Plus, if it peeks out, maybe it looks like hot cocoa's peeking out or something, you know. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay, there we go. So let's use the burnt umber and ultramarine blue. I'm going to use a little bit of the green, too, since it's on the green Candy cane, spearmint candy cane here. And whoops, not that one. A little bit of white. So I want to make a color that's just a little bit darker than my background color here for this. Yeah, that's better. See, so, you know, now you can see it there. So I'll use that to kind of shadow the edge of my candy cane here. And then use some of this unbleached titanium for the middle part. And if it looks like mud, then we can adjust the color. It's kind of not uh, appetizing right now, so it might make it a little bit warmer brown so that it looks more like a candy cane color. I don't know. We'll see.
Okay, then get in that. Get a little bit of that yellow. Get a little bit more yellow. My white. And just blending through that darker color. It's not completely dry yet, so. blend with it a little bit and if it is dry then you can always put a little bit more brown in there when you need it. I think that works. You could even make this candy cane red and green, you know. I mean candy cane can be whatever color you want it to be. There's all kinds of different colors anymore. Our favorite are the Starburst one. Not Starburst, what? Sweet Tarts? Sweet Tarts brand. Those are the best candy canes. <laughs> you can't hardly find the peppermint ones anymore. Because I wanted them for a recipe last year and I could not find them. Okay, so that, that works-ish. We'll see. I'm going to let that dry. I might make that... I feel like it's a little bit weak right here. I think it needs to be a little bit wider right here. The thing that'll really make this come to life is these little glistening spots. So we'll add some little glistening highlights to the candy cane and that'll suddenly it's like, oh, that's a shiny candy cane. Not just a flat weird piece of candy. Okay, that works. And that lighter green there too. Just got an ant crawling around in my thing here. Nice. Yeah. Oh, am I supposed to do that my dark shadow on that one in there right, I need to move on because I'm just fiddling here <laughs> I can spend all day on that one um, all right let's see here I'll go ahead and just use the red, cadmium red light and my white with this brush and do my speckles on my candy cane, on my marshmallows, thank you. Just little tiny dots. Try to keep them random. You're not really making a pattern. And keep them fairly light. You don't want these to overpower everything. So make sure they're about the same value as your background, whatever it is, on the candy cane or the marshmallow that you're doing. So a little bit darker in the shadowed areas and lighter in your highlight areas. Okay, I got my voice ready. Marshmallows. <laughs> See that? So then over here where I'm in the shadows, I'm using the darker red and then the highlighted, highlighted red in the light areas. So that's what you do in the shadows. Interesting. <laughs> That's one of our favorite shows. 
Although uh, this season has been weird. I don't know. I haven't liked the season as much, but what they do in the shadows. Mm -hmm. So the movie is the best. Bad fight. <laughs> Bad fight. <laughs> my favorite. If you don't know what we're talking about, sorry. <laughs> it's a totally random vampire mm -hmm. docudrama, mm -hmm. um, mockumentary, I should say. Uh, I think Spinal Tap for Vampires. It's pretty much what it is. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right. Oh, fun. Make sure you've got your, you know, colors on your marshmallows kind of where you want them to be before you do that part. But I think that worked. Looks good. All right. Um, let's get my white. And this is going to be another instance where we're not going to want to use just white. So I'm going to get a little bit of burnt umber, maybe a little bit of this gray. Why don't we use it? Might as well. Just kind of an off-white here. For our snowflake parts. And these are actually not really shadowed all that much, so it's just kind of a matter of filling them in with this color, and then we'll probably put a few highlights in them, and that's it. They're slightly raised up though, so um, if we want to emphasize that, we could put a little shadows behind them, like on the red part, you know. We'll see when we get them done what they look like. Might want to do that, maybe not. But I think that I might, I'm going to go in here and put in some highlights that are not in this because I want to make them look a little more three-dimensional than it is in my photo. These are definitely not a, not a clean... Outline of the snowflake, either like the mugs itself is not is not that way. So I'm getting some white here because the, there's some red that bled over into it, just kind of helping cover. And plus, it'll add a little extra dimension on top of some of these areas here. Can I add a little bit more white? But what I'm saying is like, you know, these are not like even these little sections of the, but I kind of like it <laughs> that way. So I'm going to leave it. I mean, you could, you know, you could. Yeah, it's more handmade looking. Right, it more, is. That's what craft. it is. Yeah, more crafty looking. Thank you. That's the word, hun. More homey feeling for me. Yes. So we've had some people ask, and we'll uh, we'll repost the hot chocolate mix recipe in the oh, Facebook Oh yes, group. from last year. And like I said in comments just a second ago, if you do make it. You may want to uh, wear a mask. Yes. And maybe also mix it, mix outside. it outdoors because it's very powdery. Yes. Did and you double it or did you just do it by the. I just did a single recipe this first this, time. Yeah. And we had to do it in a huge. You need the, like the biggest bowl or like a large. Um, was it all the way to the top or about halfway? It, the single one was less than halfway up. But if you do a double, yeah. Okay. I mean, we've got this big pot that we do the pickling stuff in. What is that, like a oh gosh, five-gallon? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's big. Yeah, it's a four- or five-gallon pot, and we mix it in that, and yeah. Yeah, but if you double it, you for sure need that. But if you just, it, it, unless you're going to do it for a crowd, you probably don't need to double it. We mm -hmm. just doubled it last year because we were giving it away in uh, as gifts, so... Makes good gifts. Buy some deal. really cute mugs for people and put it in a big, like, pretty container, sealed, you know, airtight container, and makes a great gift. Just gave it away with some marshmallows and some fun little things. A little tray. Yeah, and a little, yeah, I found, a, like, a really pretty wood tray. Um, and we 
we put all of our tea stuff on it all year long and then at Christmas time we have it for our hot cocos. So anyhow, that worked out. That's one of our better gift gifting. <laughs> We thought so. I don't know if everybody else that got it did. <laughs> we thought it was awesome. <laughs> but yes, it's very good, and we make it with special dark chocolate hot cocoa, too, instead the of the regular. The only way to do it? Yeah, it makes it richer. Very good. All right, just making it darker down here where it's coming down. Usually, you know, where your mug and the table meet, you almost want to be the same value right right there where they meet. That will make it like basically your edge just disappears and it makes it look more natural, more realistic. That's kind of what happens. Is that area there will be much darker. And really, you could have you could have done your whole red mug first, and then done this part. But I don't know that it'd be any faster. You know, I, I mean, not much. Uh, maybe a little bit faster for the red part, but you're still going to have to do this part this way. So, and then you're going to have to cover up your red, which will mean you have to do this twice if you don't paint around it. So, I feel like this is probably faster in the long run, painting around your red instead of, you know. Whatever you get to the point. Okay. Like it. We may have to switch to a smaller brush for this part, but we'll see. Hopefully not. What's what's we chatting about? Uh, there's a debate on what is on the marshmallows. I think they're I think they're peppermint peppermint marshmallows. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I didn't ask though. <laughs> I went with the uh, red sugar sprinkles. Mm. But they could be peppermint marshmallows. Well, for I sure. think they're I think that it's worked into them. It looks like to me, it's, it's. I don't think it's on top. Although they might have been rolled in in red, just red sugar. You know, it could be just that red sugar flake. Because I am seeing some other. Um, other sugary looking. Actually, I'm gonna do that while I'm thinking about it. Do little white bits that'll make it look like sugar. They're not fully white. Are you looking them up? Well, I think I've seen them in that fancy store. When the, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And, yeah. you know, so I'm just going to look in their little yeah. thing. Uh, you can find gourmet marshmallows more like at regular grocery stores anymore sometimes mm. this time of year, if you're lucky. different shaped ones and well um but i'll go and I'll wally world had them really mm -hmm. yeah they have a whole brand of 
gourmet marshmallows that they're selling now. Wow. Oh, fancy. I know. I should have not told you. Now I could have gotten them for your, <laughs> for your Christmas stocking. I guess I still could. I think I'm going to try making them again this year. Mm. There they are. They're called a Smashmallow candy cane. Mm. Is it like that there? Yep. Yep. At the uh, fancy Target. Mm -hmm. Oh, Target. Yeah, that's the brand that they're selling at the mm. grocery local. We need a Target in town. I wish. That's one almost enough reason to move. So, <laughs> so that's a reason not to move so we can have money. <laughs> really? Just Okay. Oh, well, sorry, my mic was on. Sorry. <laughs> okay, almost done with this part. Okay, I'm just trying to... As these images wrap around the mug, they're getting, they kind of flatten out and elongate. So that's why they kind of look funky. They're not going to be facing us, so... seeing a little bit of that blue in there but I don't uh, for my outline but I it doesn't bug me so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it I think it's all right I am gonna use a little bit of the red and clean this one up because I don't know why that kind of got funky right here We um, we can use our um, zinc white when we do our mug um, highlights and things to make them a little bit more. Oh, I've got all these cookies to do now. Looking good, looking good. All right, I'm gonna get some burnt umber in my yellow oxide. If I had burnt sienna, I'd probably add the burnt sienna. I didn't put it out, but. Burnt sienna is another good color for cookies. I'm going to add a little bit of my red just to give it that baked. Let me add a little bit of cadmium yellow as well. golden cookie color so it's close to the color that we were using before for the marshmallows but just a little bit more yellow well and of course we were using this one we ended up using this one but this color that we mixed before that had the blue in it and the brown we're gonna go more burnt umber and yellows for the cookies. Yeah, I think those will that'll work. Let's look a little bit dull, but I still need to do the background too, but just gonna kinda start there. Just wanted to see. some really dark brown here. Put it right up underneath my mug, right there. Just pull it up. 
pull it out and down a little bit and get my glaze and just kind of push that paint around a little bit. Really dark right there. It has to be super dark right there. Otherwise it just doesn't, it'll make my mug look like it's floating. Okay, I'm gonna get my, let's go ahead and just paint in this white portion of my background here. The little doily. section right there to kind of get rid of that blue. Okay, and then I'm going to use the ultramarine blue, a little bit of the burnt umber, more blue than burnt umber. I'm going to use it to shadow my plate here, add that color around my cookies, darken that whole area. Probably need to go even darker with it, but we'll just start there. That'll be kind of our base shadow color for our cookies. Or not our cookies, but our plate next to our cookies. We'll do a little bit darker right there where that shadow might come down. There we go. See how pretty that is with that blue from up in there? It's gonna look really good. I feel like these almost look like they're falling off the page here. So make sure that I'm keeping them facing the right direction. Getting a little bit more of the lighter blue here for this part that's in the light a little bit more at the top. Okay. Let's get some red. Pretty much the same red as in our mug. That's what drew me to this. You'd never know that these two didn't go together because they have such good complementary colors. I mean, this green and that green were almost the exact same. Color. That's why when I saw these two, I was like, okay, I gotta put these two together. Because <laughs> this one, the image had out of focus cookies that you couldn't really tell what they were with this mug. So I was like, well, I'm gonna find some cookies that we can put in here that are in focus. A lot, of, a lot of my job is searching images. <laughs> Actually painting them is only one small percentage of the work that goes into these paintings. A lot of the rest is looking for what to paint, finding the right images. Okay. Getting more of that red. And I'm going to get some of that dark red if I've got any. Add a little bit of the burnt umber and ultramarine blue to it. 
really have a nice dark dark red because down in here in the shadows here there's dark red just gonna kind of add these little random triangles and shapes I've switched to a little bit smaller brush to give it a little bit more control This part I'm not really seeing what's there because it's not in my photograph so I'm just gonna have to kind of look at other parts of it and figure out what maybe we're missing so Closer to the edge here I'm gonna use more of the brighter red underneath maybe even a little bit of the background color just to kind of mute it a little bit and they're not quite facing us always so I'm gonna scallop this edge here a little bit I'm gonna get some of the darker color here and just kind of add a little scallop to some of this. This part's just like tissue paper here, so this red part. Just kind of making it up, you know. Okay. Getting as close to what I think maybe is there. That's pretty much my whole adult life. Just what, kind of making, making it, it up. up. Yeah. <laughs> reds back here so they look like more blurred out There's a little bit of this gray too I'm seeing back here. I didn't do this part gray. It was all kind of white so I need to add a little bit of that gray into here. It's getting a little bit tinted by the reds but that's all right. White's one of those colors that picks up the colors around it so we very well could have some of this red in it reflecting. If you're from New England, it's scallops. Scallops. Mm. 
just translating for you, sorry. <laughs> Speaking of, they, <laughs> we had, we have a friend that went on vacation in Maine, and the boat captain was, uh, as a friend of theirs, they went on a boat tour, and they were going to a, touring around this bay in Maine of all places. We live in Arkansas, so this is, you know, pretty far away from where we're at. And they had a... Is this a good story to share? Uh, Here, let me go off mic for a second. Okay. All right, we're back. (laughs) (laughs) We're just discussing what I should say. We don't want to give out too much personal information. That's true. That's true. Yes. So anyhow, long story. Somebody, the the boat owner was a friend of ours. And and they give tours in the area. They give tours in the area. And one of our friends that lives here in Russellville are, also knows them. So they she went up there on vacation and she went on the tour with, with our friend that owns this boat company. And as they were going around, she was like, you would never believe the other day. We had somebody on the boat, and they knew Angela from her videos. <laughs> they were like, they got to talking about art somehow, and they were like, like yeah, yeah, we, yeah, it was like a, such a, a friend small in Arkansas world. Yeah, I've got paints. a friend in Arkansas that paints, does YouTube. She's like, is her name Angela? She's like, yeah, yeah, Angela Anderson. She's like, the Angela Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, so you got to tell Angela, my my friend. She's like, you got to tell Angela. She met somebody that calls, called her the Angela. <laughs> this is so hilarious. Oh my gosh, we've had we've had a couple people. Uh, one mostly at weddings and like things where friends of ours have had. You know, they've told talked about talked about us, and so we've uh, gone to you know events with our friend and. Their friends who we don't know have watched our videos and have come up to us and said, <laughs> "Oh my gosh, we're a fan," you know. But that—that's the first time I've heard of it uh, being not a friend, not not a friend of a friend, you know, <laughs> that knew who we were. Yeah, it was just kind of funny. So, so long Small story world. short, now I have to call her the Angela Anderson every time I talk to her. <laughs> so it's kind of kind of awkward, but I'm getting used to it. <laughs> All the all the family and <laughs> kids. <laughs> oh, I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> the Anders, yeah. <laughs> but the lady was, you know, obviously uh, nice. watch. I uh, know. I thought that was so cool. So, <sighs> yeah, pretty fun. Small world. Yeah, how the internet is making a smaller world. And, you know, mm-hmm. I really want to get out and travel more once all this yeah, for mess sure. we've been going through the last year or so, year, year mm-hmm. and a half, and the borders are opening back up. I want to definitely get out and see people. I agree. I think that would be really fun. Spend, yeah. you know, we can just sleep in their spare bedrooms and stuff as we travel <laughs> around. I mean, that's the reason why we're doing this. It's <laughs> free vacation. Right. You know, free, just free, free places Airbnbs. to stay. Airbnbs. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Check. So how's our fan base in Italy? Is it good? Cause, you know. I do. I do. Giovanna and I are okay. tight. She right. lives in Naples, and she's been so I know, a fan since day one. I know we got much. Australia pretty well, and yeah. we got Canada pretty good. So. We got Canada covered. Yeah. South Africa is good. So. We've got a lot of people in India that watch us, Sweet. too. Sweet. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Germany, France, which we've, that's the only place I've been to besides the U.S. and Mexico and Canada. Briefly, like I stepped over the border and, and back. That's it. <laughs> Way back when we were on the Niagara Falls tour. That's about as close as I got. So I want to go back, though. I've, yeah, we, we do like to travel. We haven't gotten to do it at all in a while <laughs> i didn't even know that the u.s was closed down like i didn't i don't know where i've been living under a rock apparently because i did not know that people weren't allowed to visit the u.s from other countries 
I guess I thought it, we were our porters had been open this whole time. Well, from how we act when you go to the grocery store, you wouldn't think that we'd ever had a pandemic. So <laughs> I guess that's why I thought. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Well, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. It's I'm just gonna move on. Um, I use this warm brown that we made before now, and kind of do my cookies here. This is darker than it's going to end up being, but I'm going to start with this color and then we'll, like I said, we'll add our highlights and things on top of it. But having the darker color will kind of give us a good base. So we're seeing a little bit of the cookie peeking around the sides of these some in some places like this one's kind of even with the edge so I'm gonna you're seeing just a little bit of it peeking through but then on this one you're seeing a lot more of it Again, just a little bit of it on this side where the icing didn't cover it all the way. Okay. Oh yeah, and then this whole bottom is tree trunk is cookie. Okay. Gotta hurry because I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? I should have just whispered it to Mark off camera. It's like, okay, hurry up. I forgot to go just before the show. I usually remember, but I forgot because I was prepping. Do we need to do an intermission? No, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> I can right. step in and take over for a little while. Okay. You know, and, yeah. You yeah. Wanna sure. Just paint for a little while. Yeah. Right. No problem. I'm gonna darken up this plate here. And there's a lot more of the plate showing because I moved all the cookies off that were there before. <laughs> And there were two other cookies in here that I took out, so. Kind of. You have your uh, Christmas cooking party scheduled, right? I do. It's in December, right? Yep. Yeah, we didn't get to do it last year. Every year I do a Christmas cookie decorating party with my friends. And. Uh, There's even a video here on her channel. That's true. With the I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah it showed I think it's le it. even less popular than the tank video. It's pretty old. Uh, is it still on there? I think I yeah. might have taken it off. No, no, no. I logged it. So it's there. Wow. Yeah. I, I, it, it was not a good quality video. My friend uh, was... My co-host at that time, and she didn't tell me that my audio was repeating, so I had <laughs> to delete the first like hour of the whole show. It's like a two-hour show, so it starts basically in the middle of <coughs> one of the <laughs> cookies that I'm decorating. So if you're like, this is really bad, yeah, this is what and Patreon that's how it started. has paid <laughs> for. Is better 
everything. <laughs> and those are the true fans that suffered through that and said, yeah, I want more of that no, pain and suffering. I think I probably had, tw- I want to say there was like 25 people that actually watched that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I realized, too, that people didn't want to just watch me do anything. They just wanted to watch me paint. <laughs> so no, don't stray from the program too far because that's not going to. So that's why there's not a cooking version of this channel? No. Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. It's like, okay, check. They don't really care <laughs> about the cookies. <laughs> They're not as excited about it as you are, Ange. <laughs> All right, I'm just trying to kind of think about where this light, if the light's coming from over here, where these shadows would be falling on the plate. I'm looking at the reference photo too, but again... A lot of this is not in shadow in our photo because of the because of the cookies that are hiding them, you know. All right. And it's a little bit messy over here, so I'm gonna get a little bit of this blue. That was my plate color. Let's kind of blend back over that a little bit. Try to smooth out that shadow just a little bit. I'm leaving the whole thing kind of a little bit more painterly, messy, a little bit than maybe normal. So, and I'm going to use this same color under my mug here too. Just there's like a shadow of the mug there. Maybe coming down that way. Keep it transparent and then it won't get too, too noticeable. I'm going to let that dry and we're going to work on the background here. Get this the way we want it. Man, my Stickman video has more views than the cookie decorating. And cookie decorating. Well, maybe now that you mention Five. it, people will go and watch how bad it, just to watch how bad it was. Just turn the sound off. <laughs> yeah, just, well, no, I mean, I took the part out where it was repeating, but, okay. you know, it was like, God bless Carolyn, rest in peace. She, mm-hmm. But she uh, didn't tell me wasn't I guess reading the chat I don't know she's supposed to be but wasn't and so literally an hour of people going I, the audio is repeating before she finally told me and then I <laughs> so it's a 36 minute video yeah it was like an hour and a half at least <laughs> of me doing cookies decorating different kinds but it was all echoing mm-hmm. which it was doing the other day in one of my hmm. videos too yeah I need to get the new soundboard it's starting to do weird things all right there we go so I'm gonna get some water here I've got the little foam pouncers so the key is just to not load them up too heavy with paint I'm gonna go ahead and use the zinc white because I've got it out here and I'm going to use the cadmium yellow. Try to get just a little bit of it on there. And I'm also seeing like a little bit of that magenta color. So kind of like the color that we used on our on our um, marshmallows there. And you can mix this up ahead of time if you want to. We'll see there. The zinc white will keep it from getting from being too overpowering. We'll see how that looks. I'm gonna use this side to kind of tap over it. Okay, so that's a little too dark to me. I'm gonna get some white here, titanium white. Add that to this so it's a lot lighter. 
There we go, a little bit softer. And then I can use this side. I can just set it down and kind of twist it a little bit. Yeah, and you, you may have said this, I wasn't fully paying attention, believe it or not. So you have other videos that you've done this effect on. I think they're also Christmas, weren't they? Um, yeah. The, I'm pretty sure. The um, Last year, if I remember right. Yeah, it's, you're thinking of the, <clears throat> the one for Patreon. I did one for, oh. for the gingerbread house that was had this in the background. Oh, okay. And, but I did do one a couple of years ago um, of a snow globe that had this in the background. Mm -hmm. And we've done some this year that have had it, too. I think I'm going to well, use my brush for this instead. You did the uh, mug with Christmas cookie last year. And it's uh, got a little bit like yeah, that. Yeah, that does have. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Getting a little bit of the magenta and pink here. So I'm seeing kind of some pink and some yellow and some overlapping. And then a lot of them are just like white or light blue. Use a little bit of the turquoise here with my white. It's turning them purple. Because I still have that yellow and pink in my brush. But you could probably do these before you do your mugs and stuff because you weren't having to paint around now. Paint around everything. white here. A little bit of the ultramarine blue. I don't want it that dark though. A lot of this white is white here. Got like little pieces of something in there. Fuzz. From something. Could be. It's picked it up from somewhere. Okay. So just kind of going over some of these. I find with these is kind of more is better, you know, like and overlapping them really makes them look better too. Doing different colors. Should the white or kind of whiter there not as developed as the ones over here we can see them more the whole shape better than some of them Just 
do a couple of them kind of bright. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just make some actual green greenery. behind my cookies here. Just like that. A little bit of white. And just make sure that the middle part of the... I'm going to even use a little bit of red there with my green and brown. Like the middle part just needs to be dark. It doesn't have to be the same green as my candy cane for it to work. It just has to be kind of close. Same family. You could do berries. You could do whatever you wanted, really. It's up to you. Go ahead and go I'm going to commit. <laughs> <laughs> Anna, what brush is it? it? I'm just going to commit. This is the um, filbert. So the key is that there's going to be like kind of dark along the center stem. And then there's going to be tips that are coming out towards us. So those ones will be short and maybe kind of in the middle of it. Um, not as the ones in the middle are not going to be as long if that makes sense so those mm -hmm. ones are usually coming straight at us and then the, the ones along the edges will be the ones where we're seeing the shape so kind of just kind of pick a line and do your greenery going in different directions along that line and then and I might even do a little some down here too, just to balance it out. Like coming out from behind my mug here. Okay, Let's see. berries like I said or you could do whatever you wanted to really with this but I'm gonna probably darken that up I gotta let it dry I need to darken that up too I don't have the right brush for it really it's not quite the right brush I'm gonna get this one this is the quarter inch angle and get these wet so they don't dry with that paint on them How much time do we have? Okay, so we've gone almost two hours. I'm going to get my zinc white here, a little bit of titanium white. And I'm going to use this brush to put in some highlights on my mug. Go kind of like right along that edge and just there we go. Following the curve of the mug is the important thing. So right here in the middle, you're gonna go kind of straight up and down, and then on the sides, you're gonna turn it with the mug. And up here, follow the rim. Maybe a little bit of 
blue. Here we go. I don't know why that turned black. Very strange. I probably had some brown in there where I picked up that blue. Get some of that red, just kind of going back over that a little bit. Just a little, a little bit. Not quite right. starting to get sticky after two hours. We use just the cadmium red here to just throw in some little brighter spots here and there. I think that that's about all I'm going to do there. I'm going to grab my fluid white and go along this rim of the mug just right along the top here. There's some highlights. I'm going to go just above the just over the edge of the red. With your what brush? With this angle brush, the quarter inch angle. And just like the very pointy tip of it. Right. Okay. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna use a little bit of it on the top of my marshmallow here and there. I've already kind of got a pretty good bright spot on most of this but just kind of just a few spots there also my candy cane if i need it which i kind of think i have it but it doesn't hurt okay a bunch of random little highlights in there just kind of along that middle line there. I need to just darken up. It needs to have dark contrast. There's no contrast. There's no dimension. Which it's, I mean, if we wanted to make it look, you know, like faded and blurry, we could have left it, I guess, but I, I just, Felt like it needed a little bit more structure. Mm -hmm. It's looking better to me.
maybe a little bit of burnt umber. Again, if I had the burnt sienna, I'd probably add that at this point. I can get it, but I'm just going to stick with what I've got. It's working okay. But um, I might add a little bit more of the brighter yellow. Just since that... There we go. Since the green in this has got that kind of yellowish tint to it, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to this. A little bit of white. And just going over. We've already got kind of a start on this, but just adding another color to our highlights, and I really need them brighter than I have them. So there we go. Kind of a combo of darker and lighter. Yeah, the greens. Don't want to cover up all my dark, but I do need them, you know, like some of the lighter kind of overlapping them. Let's get some mid-tone. I've got like dark and light, but I don't have any kind of middle middle of the road green here. Number. So the same colors, but not as much brown. There we go. So just a little bit of each of these to balance it out. Okay, I think that's working kind of more tealish color of the green kind of works with our teal teal color too and that we'll be using in our cookies all right let's get our cookies going I swear this is the never ending meeting <laughs> sorry <laughs> it really doesn't seem like it's been two hours honestly good. it does to me because I have to go to the bathroom That's well why. why don't you stop no I'm good we'll pause I'm joking and I'm joking. Okay, it's fine. Right. You're just afraid I'm going to take over and show everybody how much how more talented really, I am. How, well, who the real talent behind exactly. the show is. <clears throat> who taught you everything? <clears throat> Mark paid the bills for the 20 years that it took me to learn how to paint, so. <laughs> Take care of the kids, too. <laughs> In there somewhere. It's definitely not a one-person operation. Mm -mm. It was us together. Yes. All right, let me think here. Red, white. Red, white. Oh, I got it right. I thought I'd gotten that in the wrong spot there for a minute. So this white is that blue-gray from the white and burnt umber together with the ultramarine blue. I'm going to start with this for our icing. I'm starting to hate that blue that I used for the outline. <laughs> it's like everything is taking twice as long to cover it. There we go. White here. Just kind of brushing some white into the icing to give it some 
shadows and highlights. Looks good. <coughs> and then my snowflake is also this color. So, you know, if you need to take a break, I'll just play your cookie decorating video on my phone. And hold it up to the camera. Hold it up so to the camera, yeah, it. so people can see it. And <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. All right. It's spitballing ideas here. I think here. that I'll... You're almost done. Yeah, I'm almost done. Although, I need... I don't know. I just noticed my whole bottom corner of my painting is covered. Yeah, I'm not oh, going to be God. singing, people. There we go. What? Somebody said, or he can sing. <clears throat> <laughs> the mics will be off during that portion of the show. <laughs> I'm going to add just a little bit of turquoise to the screen here. Cobalt teal. Definitely like the green greenery, green greenery. Mm -hmm. I think that helped. You can leave it out if you don't like it. It's up to you. It's your painting. Mm -hmm. I was like, find it funny when people tell me that they didn't like something I did. You know, somebody the other day was like, I liked it before you splattered. I'm like, okay, like it's too late now. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do about it. It's like, you feel free to leave that part out if you don't like it, like mm -hmm. if when you paint your own. Noted, thank you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I don't know why they think that I need to know that, but okay. Oh, well, I'm not, a, a, obviously I don't handle criticism very well. <laughs> You'd have thought that after all these years I, of doing I will YouTube, say I would get better at it. But that after just, uh, having worked with you for the last several years uh -huh. and seeing that I've I've changed the way I talk to people too. Really? Yeah. 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 I think you're right. I, like, I do. They don't really care. They don't really want to know. So right. It's my problem, not theirs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that it makes you realize that people who you see on TV or, you know, whatever that are going through things or, you know, maybe do put out an album that you don't love or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. It's like those are like people with feelings, you know, <laughs> like they worked hard on that. <laughs> and it yeah, you don't have to job. like it, right. but... You know, tearing them, tearing them down for that, you know, for doing something that you didn't like, you know, it's like, you don't have to like it. Right. They did it, you know, it's like, I don't know, art is so subjective. It's like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. You know, when you go into a to an art gallery, you're going to see works that you really, really like and other ones you just walk by and you don't really care for. And, right. You know, and that's just the way it is. I mean. Yeah, I heard I heard somebody saying the other day and I I kind of I kind of got the point, you know, he was like it's not really helpful to say, you know, well all art is valid, you know. That's one of the things that I, you know, say in my channel, you know, it doesn't 
matter what level you're at, you know, your art is important. And I do believe that. But he was also saying, you know, you really is important to have an opinion, though, <laughs> you know, have an opinion about your art. Because that way you don't you if you don't have an opinion, you'll never grow. You know, you'll never um, you'll never strive to do better, you know, kind of thing. So I get that, too. You know, I, I do agree. I, I think that my point is that you just have to appreciate where you're at. You know, it may not be where you want to end up, but let yourself enjoy the process. Enjoy the journey. See progress, you know, and... And don't get down on yourself. I think that the problem with beginners I see is that they get down on themselves and they give up before they even give themselves a chance to learn. Right. So I think that the that there is, yes, you want to kind of, you know, have an opinion, see things, find things that you like and figure out what it is about them that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go over this with this lighter green while this is still wet. And you're always learning. And you're always learning. I'm better than I was, hopefully, you know, when I first started YouTube. I know I am. And hopefully continue to get better. I call my paintings with my patrons challenge painting because they're challenging for me. <laughs> they're things that I have not painted before, usually. And so I'm, you know, always constantly trying to do better and learn things that I don't know how to do yet. Learn how to paint things that... I'm like, oh, how would I do that? You know, and figure it out. It's just what makes it fun for me, you know. Mm -hmm. In the last few weeks, I've learned some new functions in Excel that I'm excited about. There you go. I don't know if anybody really cares enough for me to share it with them, but, you know. <laughs> Happy to share it if they want to know. You want to talk about low view count? You'll get my views down real fast. But there are some Excel Getting channels the out there that I really here. do enjoy. So, <laughs> No, I know. I know. We all have. That's the beauty of YouTube. It's like there's something for everybody. I learned through Marquez, who's got a massive channel, that uh, YouTube is the number two search engine behind Google worldwide. That's how big it is. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Get my red. I don't know why I thought this. I'm glad I didn't pick this for Tuesday. Mark would have. Mm -hmm. You'd be by yourself right now. Yeah. He'd have been in the other room watching Oak Island. While I was finishing this up. It's worth it though. It's fun. I think that it's turning out good. I like it. This is definitely the kind of Christmas cookies that I like to do with my friends when we do our parties. We decorate them up. Real fancy like. Almost too pretty to eat. Almost. And then I have a friend, Stacy, who, who she and I are the ones that started the cookie party way back when our two boys were toddlers and they were in their Mother's Day Out class in the same class together and at the daycare kind of thing once a week. And so we did a cro cookies for the teachers and we got together and decorated them and then <coughs> continue we had so much fun doing it we did it every year and then started adding, inviting friends and stuff so now we have about eight of us that do it almost every year when they can even one that comes from out, out of town drives an hour to get here to do it Lane but um, Stacy is notorious for her cookies because she's the sprinkle queen she doesn't care about really the looks too much. She doesn't like get too fancy with the looks, but she loads those sprinkles up like she will have. Mm -hmm. Her cookies are loaded with sprinkles. She'll take a cookie and kind of do like this, and then she'll just dump like a whole thing of mm -hmm. sprinkles on it. More. More. Yep. They're just covered with sprinkles. You gotta live. 
Yep. So, and then the funny thing is last year, somebody, because we've teased her about this for years, because she's the only one of us that does that. We all decorate them real carefully, and Stacy just throws some icing on there and dumps dumps a bunch of sprinkles on, calls it good. And um, the funny thing was that, like, last year there was a trend that went around that was called, I can't remember, trash can cookies or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. But it was that. It was like, they looked just like Stacy's cookies. Like, you could have put one of hers next to the picture from, like, it was like Better Homes and Gardens or one of those magazines. It was like the new trend is, like, you know, these cookies with just crazy sprinkles everywhere. And I'm just like, Stacy, you were ahead of the time. Mm-hmm. You didn't even know you were a trendsetter. <laughs> just funny. And then my friend Lane, who, who's an art teacher who owned a paint class, paint, paint, sip and paint kind of place in town before she moved. She, I mean... Hers are incredible. I'm like, I'm, I, I kind of fall in the middle between Stacy and Lane somewhere. Like, <laughs> like a doom, but I don't want to spend an hour on each one. <laughs> you know, Lane's are like works of art <laughs> for real. <clears throat> I should see if I have a picture. I probably do on my phone somewhere. Have you look at, <laughs> no. No, they can watch the video. We have the, <laughs> Mark's like, oh my God, she's going to stop. <clears throat> All right. Oh, we're getting there. Almost. Almost there. I do probably need fresh paint, but. All right. I'm going to get some of the white with my red hair. Just add some little bits of highlight just kind of along the top edge there. The icing. There's a picture of our table last year. With the family. Oh, wow. Yeah, there we go. There's. <laughs> we kind of do it upright. We kind of spend some time. Yeah. <laughs> We've got all these little bottles of things and some sp- about a bazillion sprinkles of every kind. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> We did not start there, though. That, that's <laughs> that's 18 years worth of <laughs> building, up. building up to, yeah. And fortunately, sprinkles don't really expire, so some of those some of those have been around a while, but not very many of them due to Stacy. <laughs> She's gonna be like, she never watches my videos, so it's okay. all right that looks good I think it's got a good like kind of look to it I'm going to get the burnt umber here kind of thin it out with a little bit of water I've switched back to my one round here I'm just going to come up under my cookie here and darken up, create a shadow, drop shadow, right? Where the icing kind of comes down, this side is in the light, so I don't have to really do it there. This one I'm kind of making up as I go because it's not in my picture. At but all. you've decorated Christmas trick tree cookies before so right you know what they look like well i do but i don't know exactly where the shadows mm-hmm. and things are on here but I'm just gonna guess if our light's coming from here all right and then i'm gonna get what color do i want i think i'm gonna use this unbleached titanium 
a little bit of yellow oxide. It's going to be my cookie color. And Mm, needs to be a little bit darker. Just be seen against that white. There. Hmm. I'm going to have to do darker underneath it so it stands out. Not being able to see it really. Yeah, I need a little more contrast there somewhere. And there's a little bit of it kind of showing around the top side too, so. Just kind of letting it kind of drag and create kind of almost like a dry brushing it on so it's kind of creating a imperfect outline and it'll look like that kind of crumbly cookie texture hopefully okay I don't know why I didn't think I needed my burnt sienna Oh, there is a little bit of icing on that. I didn't notice it. I'm gonna go ahead and get, let's just pretend we did it in brown. That's how I do my trees. bit of white okay let's grab the straight white Just think about anywhere where the cookie might be raised up a little bit, getting a little bit more light. And I'm not putting this on very like smoothly, I'm just kind of dabbing it on. Okay, almost there. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of this kind of blue. Oh, I don't have any left.
mixing white and ultramarine blue and, and the um, cobalt teal here. I'm going to start that. Just my color for my lines here. V's right up next to that little dot and then another set of V's and then a big dot right here. And voila, snowflake. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we need a little bit darker color for the shadow, so I'm going to get the just more turquoise and ultramarine blue with no white in it. Okay, these paints are completely dried out. <laughs> and I'm going to put a little bit of green in it to make it more turquoisey. There we go. And then facing away from the light. in the burnt umber and then a little bit of that blue mm, glaze so it's not quite so dark I'm gonna go up underneath add shadows under the icing So that darker blue is shadowing on the icing itself. And then I'm going to add the highlights to the icing and then we'll be done. This is on the white part of the cookie, the shadow. And the white part of the cookie making it stand out. And then we'll get the cobalt teal and some white, mostly white. Okay, we need a contact golden and patent that color, mostly white. <laughs> and this, this color I'm going to just kind of dab here and there. I'm not going to put it everywhere. And this will be the opposite side of my shadow that I did. This brush is really kind of too big for this, but it's close enough. I'm being lazy. Don't want to clean my brush up. Start a new one. Just for this. A little bit more cobalt teal here. 
Just going back and making those a little bit wider. All right, there we go. I'm gonna get a little bit of that dark turquoise and put it on the back side of that one, that big one. And then I can get a little bit of the dark red, burnt umber, red and ultramarine blue. Just a little bit. Okay, make that kind of stand out in relief a little bit. I probably need to shadow on that cookie a little bit more too, but I don't want to spend another hour on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, at some point you just got to go, okay, that's good enough. <laughs> All right, adding a little bit of red to this. I want a little bit of red in my cookie shadow. white, some of this unbleached titanium, maybe a little bit of the yellow oxide, bright yellowy white here. If this cookie was not so small, I would be using my blender here, but I can't fit it in here. I won't be able to get this detail, so I'm just going to have to stick with this brush. It's not giving me as much texture as I really want, but it's just going to have to do. Give them a nice bright highlight on some of these cookie parts here. Number really dark right there, just where those two meet, just to give them some separation. Same thing here. There we go. Okay.
kind of like the cookie, the mug here. You just have to have it really dark sometimes in order to give the right contrast. Now that this is on here, I'm realizing that it needs to be darker. I didn't shadow my my green on my table. That's gonna have a shadow too, so you need to have that on there. Otherwise, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been a big mistake. But that's the kind of thing that, you know, you have to watch for. All right. Um, and probably some shadows on this, too, with the green sticking up there. But I'm going to get some white. sticking out brighter white on there and then really these these trees the tree has little dots of all the colors just about um, little snowy bits here's your picture of that do you still have that up um, mm-hmm I'm going to do like a light green. What are you looking for? I was just looking to see how I did the trees, but okay. It's fine. I can. Whatever you decide to do, just make sure you add a shadow to it. Do we still have anybody watching? Have they all given up? <laughs> Thank you guys for sticking in for the long one here. shadow I do need to darken up this some of the blue and white that was kind of my base for this cookie I'm gonna put in some kind of mid-tones that'll make the shadowy areas look more prominent too make it a little bit brighter in those brighter areas that. 
So just doing that helps it make it not look so flat that it's actually, you yeah. know, a, a real poured. Right. I think they call it flooding. Right. Yeah, so this is the royal be... icing. This is not what I use because we, we don't have to outline anything. We just right. We just put it on and stick the goodies inside the icing before it dries. I use a... I don't like the hard icing. Mine stays soft pretty much it's it sets up a little bit but it doesn't get hard and crunchy like the royal icing does I don't really like the crunchy icing the cookies bit closer to that background color over here too will make it not as uh, like pull the eye down as much all right and then let's finish up holy crap almost three hours sorry <laughs> excuse my language i'm looking at the time here at least you're the kind of person that doesn't cuss so that was good <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that would have been bad. Um, it's not that I don't. I just save it for when I'm really mad. <laughs> I don't surprise cuss. I'm mad cuss. <laughs> easier if you just painted a plate of the Christmas cookies you make for me. True. No co no decorations. Just flat. Just plain flat. Overcooked. Yeah. He asks for them that way. It's very weird. And so I just kind of get like the scrap pieces that are just kind of yeah, rolled out. Mm -hmm. I save the Save the dregs of the yeah, exactly. That's cookies. exactly what it is. <laughs> I get all the seconds. Yep, he gets the seconds. And I'll come home from my other job, and I'll be like, oh. And I'll try not to eat them all before dinner. Yeah. Yes. He does not appreciate my cookies with all the icing on it. It's just very sad. Oh, I, I appreciate them for the artistic value. <laughs> but they're yucky. It just doesn't taste like They're very yucky. They don't, they're, they're just not like, yucky. oh. They're not, <laughs> they're like, not yucky. They're delicious. So m the more and more that I realize m the things that I liked the most from my childhood cooking was mm -hmm. because we were poor and didn't have enough for everybody. <laughs> So I'm sure the Christmas cookie was like, well, just smash them as flat as you can so you get as many as you possibly can. And like, yeah. So they feel like they're getting some, right, exactly. a lot of cookies. Right. You can have three of those that would have made one exactly. regular cookie. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's funny. That's probably true. Yeah, Mark and I both grew up. Not, not so wealthy. <laughs> Both of us. 
my my experience was in Palm Springs where being being poor was not so great. <laughs> <laughs> Not the norm, I should say. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. I survived. Mm -hmm. I'm tougher for it. Plus, I think <clears throat> it's made me a more compassionate person because I've experienced bullying. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and I think anybody who has experienced that, I, I would hope at least, you know, comes out of it with a little bit more compassion. I know some people it does the opposite, but... Mm -hmm. All right, so just adding. We already had the shadows down, kind of, but I kind of pretty much covered <laughs> covered them up completely. So I'm gonna have to put my shadows back in again. I'm gonna go in here and add my highlights to all these little dots. Just put a little white highlight on all of them, facing the direction of our light. I did that here too, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Fun. Let's do it on top of my... I'm just kind of dabbing this on here so it's not... Looks like it's... Garland. And then we can get our dark green. One last little bit here. Dark green. What are we gonna do for stick man today? Oh, we can just do it on Tuesdays. On Tuesdays? Okay. Yeah. Mark's like I wanted to go. No, no, no. <laughs> no, we can do it today. We can we can do a cookie or a cup or something. I'm all, you know, I'm always down for a stick man. <laughs> Nothing completes a video like stick man. <laughs> and what level difficulty would you put this at? Um, well, just based on the time period, you know, time, I usually say, you know, under two hours is beginner ish, you mm -hmm. know, and then anything over two hours is going to be kind of more of an intermediate level. And anything over like three to four hours is going to be, you know, definitely intermediate. And and then the longer, like five, you know, the, the videos that I do for my patrons that are five or six hours longer are advanced. So this one being, you know couple hours I would definitely say being on the maybe scale of one to five one being easiest and five being hardest it's probably in there at around a three I'd say you know it's got a lot of detail in it so I'm gonna get a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt umber here make a little bit more of my shadow color Glaze. And I realized I don't have a shadow underneath this side of the icing here on this cookie. Okay. All right. Is it, is it photorealistic? Probably not. <laughs> Because I fudged it a little bit in places, but it's it's close. It's close. Just scooch it over a little so we get it all centered yeah. up there. Huh? Scooch it so we get it all centered. Oh, you're still working. Sorry. I'll let you no, work. I'm, I just realized that this... I'm going to add some darker shadows just in a couple of places. So like right in here. And right on the back side of this guy. You can put your color down and then just either use your finger 
to blend out that wet edge. Or you, know, you can use a kind of a dry brush to wipe off some of that paint. Make a wet brush there. Grab it while it's still, before it fully dries. I lightened up that part of the cookie, but then I, or the, that plate, but I realized then I really need the shadow of this cookie. So I can kind of come in where the, you know, follow the edge of that cookie a little bit around, but it needs to be a little bit darker right there. There we go. And then same thing with this guy. There we go. Okay. That makes some more stand out a little bit better. Oh. It's it's 99 90% what I wanted it to be maybe. <laughs> I I feel like I probably could do I if I'd known I was gonna do this greenery I'd probably maybe do some berries and things too but I think I'm gonna stop for now but you know I think you could do some red berries um, you know just to kind of finish it off or maybe even like bring the bokeh effect a little bit around here I feel like this area oops see I got a little bit okay so let me do this while I'm while I'm thinking about it Get a little bit of the gray. Whoops. I gotta get that turquoise with the white. I just have to have it dark enough to cover that white area there. There we go. Come on. color wasn't set in so and really none of this color is fully cured until about 24 hours after you paint it so that's why you don't want to rub like that you know you can kind of almost reactivate the paint if you if you put a little bit of water on the background um, or not water but uh, yeah either water or paint fresh paint um, over the top of an area and sometimes you can adjust it a little bit and it just rub circles in here pull that paint off in some circles okay there we go fun yeah that was fun I am um, I'm just she I'm can't just, resist. I know. I'm she sorry. can't help herself. I, I can't. I can't. Well, this is when I stop and really look at it. So, just realize I think I want a little bit of yellow over here. I feel like it's all over here and it's kind of distracting. So, I'm just going to put a couple of yellow circles down over here. Okay. Bring that color over a little bit more. And even though our light is all off this side, I, I think that, I think it's all right. It doesn't have to be exactly like in the photo. We can make adjustments. I think it was just pulling all the attention over here. This was, this area looked too plain compared to the rest of the painting. So I feel like it needed a little, a little bit more bokeh attention there. And I noticed that there's some darker, darker, um, I could probably gone a little bit darker with the 
blue because I noticed some darker blue areas up in here so we can yeah I don't know I don't like that I probably should have started out with a little bit darker background than what I did so the only way to really do that at this point is to just kind of wash it carefully around objects but I don't know that it's really gonna you'd really have to just kind of do the whole background again you could wash over these with a glaze of blue change the tint a little bit and you're just using a deer foot mm -hmm. but yeah I don't think I just feel like there probably could be seeing the dark darker areas in the background will help you know would help um, make this foreground area more prominent and give it a little bit more contrast back here there we go that's a little little bit better And a couple blue circles there, even though technically their circles are not not blue. It's light, but well, we, it's okay. We can do what we want. Mm -hmm. And I can always go over some of that, and there we go. Put the light color in the middle of it. All right. Ooh, that was a long one. But yeah, I like it. It's all right. It's, I don't know. Um, I, it's one of those ones, especially since I changed so many things, that I'd probably need to look for, look at for a few days before I finished, you know, finished it completely. I'm sure there's things that I've missed just because painting it. Usually I don't, sitting down and painting something for the first time and finishing it in one setting is just not not what you would do so what I'm doing is not the norm or what I would recommend <laughs> <laughs> if you want your sanity <laughs> it's alright but I'm going to sign it here I don't know why I'm signing it right in the middle, but oh well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I usually sign it farther over. Keeping it in the dark area there, maybe. All right, there we go. What do we think? Yeah? Okay. I'm going to give him a cookie. We'll just do it next week. All right. Oh, there we go. All right. Thanks, guys, for hanging in there and a long one today. I appreciate it. Uh, we always appreciate you and your comments, encouragement. Um, hope you leave a comment for us and let us know what you liked about it. And um, if you feel like you need to tell me what you didn't like about it, that's okay, too. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back. I'm going to add just a hint of red back here. We will be back on Tuesday. We're going to have another video. And if you're part of my Patreon crowd, we're doing a video again tomorrow for our patrons. So, yeah, that's our bonus video level. for the $5 level. And then we'll be back. Oh, yeah, Thursday we have a video also. So, all right, for our $10 folks on Patreon. And if you want information about that, you can click down the description. There's all the information on where to go to buy the materials that I used today and to um, join us for the bonus video if you want to do that. Um, we're going to be painting a really pretty landscape. Um, so I think it'll be a lot of fun. Really beautiful. I have a photo of it. I'm going to kind of merge these two together. So I've got those two. I'm going to kind of do a mashup for both of them. So that'll be tomorrow.
All right. Thanks, guys, so much. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.